Hi guys, so it's Hannah and welcome or welcome back to a game of Fangs and Thrones. This video, as you can probably tell, is a weekly vlog. Now I am starting this a little bit later um, because I went shopping after work and if you can hear ticking, it's a timer for my tea. I'm making enchiladas. Um, so if you can just hear the ticking, it's just the timer so I know when my, when my food's done. Uh, but books. Over the weekend, I read uh, The Outlaws Scarlet and Brown by Jonathan Stroud and I gave it four stars um, because it has been so warm in England um, over the weekend I decided I would go for a wintry setting. This is The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubin Kowalski inspired by Russian folklore and is set in a frozen wasteland, I think, so far. I haven't started it yet, but the cover, which is somewhere, which is over here, gives instantly gives me cool winter vibes. So I'll just put that back away. And I am really enjoying the experience of reading the subscription boxes admittedly the majority are fantasy and um, there's at least two sci-fi in there one and two historical two possibly three historical fiction and i'm liking that the choice was taken away from me so if the cover isn't particularly something that i would go for um i'm still going to give it a go and actually i know we do i know we're not supposed to but we all judge books by covers don't we um and so that's the start of this book this vlog i haven't started the bright and the pale yet but i'll probably get a little ways in tell you initial feelings and then um if anything interesting happens i'll let you know i did get an email to say my fairy loop box is on its way so that will probably happen in this vlog or next week depending on when it gets here and yeah i'll let you know if anything interesting happens so it's tuesday it's another sweltering hot day so i'm wearing a lovely new dress and back see if i can show you it's disney um anyway back back to the book because that's what we're here for i have the book somewhere but the dust jacket is here and I so in case you've forgotten from yesterday I decided to read The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubin and Rubin Kowalski and drop the dust jacket the naked heart cover is gorgeous it's a very light pale blue and I have the very loot edition with the sprayed edges now I've got it. I think I got to page got chapter seven. Yeah, chapter seven, sixty-four pages in. The chapters are reading really quick. Um, we pretty much hit the ground running in terms of plot. I'm really enjoying our character, our main character Vi. Is it Vi? I'm no good with names. Yeah, Val, not Val, Valeria, Val. Um, oh, that was an extreme close-up of my face. Um, so, I'm really enjoying her. She's spunky, she's uh, the only survivor of this plague, if I haven't already told you. Uh, she's the only known survivor of a plague that left her entire village, apart from her best friend, encased in a sheet of ice. And her best friend survived with her up until a year ago where he was captured and presumed dead. Now Valeria has just bumped into the people who took Alex and now she's decided to work for them in order for Alex to gain his freedom. And there seems to be a bit of a strange religion in this book. I don't think this is a spoiler because I am only, like I say, I am only on chapter 7 which is only 64 pages in and this is a quick read for me at least. Um, but we have two gods. We have the Bright God, who is in, who is in charge of all the 
goodness in the world and then we have the pale god who is in charge of all the badness the sickness the plagues uh, the suffering that kind of thing and there's also this charm this um or called ingot and the place where valeria comes from is the only known place in the country that sell that is able to mine this ore and it has resulted in the that town's people being extremely recognizable by sight because they all have uh, clear white hair and very clear almost translucent skin so that marks them out and obviously the people the rest of the world see this town as a harbinger of doom they blame they blame that area for all the badness that's going on so valeria has to hide in plain sight she has to hide that part of herself and in the author letter which i have somewhere <coughs> uh, jessica ruben kowalski says that it is a book about female anger female rage and how it's looked down upon and forced out of us because it isn't proper and i can see that in this book valeria is very angry which is understandable she's been torn from her home her home people are her parents her family are encased in a sheet of ice and the rest of her people are being hunted and blamed for this stroke of bad luck that's happening to the rest of the country and i'm really enjoying it the writing is simple but it's not a bad simple it's just it's a little bit to the point it's not the district there's just enough description for me uh, there's just enough action it's a nice a nice balance it's nothing nothing special but it's nothing dire either and i am writing on a sliding scale for this book because i believe this is ruben kowalski's debut and i'm going to read for the rest of the night and come back if anything interesting happens So it's Wednesday, as you'll have seen from the B-roll, I finished The Bright and the Pale and the rating 
was a three star. Now I use Corpel, which gives us, which gives the ability to rate each individual element separately. So while I rated the enjoyment side of this eight out of ten because I did really enjoy it. I mean, I read it in like basically one sitting. Um, the plot was a little bit predictable. Um, to myself at least, and yes, it is a debut, but the plot was predictable. Um, and the writing was just okay. So we got a, a three star from Corpel, but it is a good three star. And since it is the author's debut, it is a good starting point for, for them, for me, for them, for me. Anyway, I will be looking for the sequel to The Right and the Pale whenever I find it, because it was interesting and it did intrigue me enough to continue even if it was a little bit predictable um, but I'll talk more about that in my I'll talk more about my full thoughts in the wrap up I also picked out the Shadow War by Lindsay Smith this is just the cover the dust jacket with the blurb is here and this is a historical fiction set in World War II following five teens Daniel and Rebecca who seek revenge against the Nazis who fought who slaughtered their family and the spelling of Rebecca is R-A-B-E-K-A which I could be wrong but I believe that is the way the Jewish spell their name and the Nazis destroyed the family so uh, Simone is determined to fight back against the oppressors who ruined her life and corrupted her, her girlfriend so we have a bit of LGBTQ plus in there in the height of in the height of when the Nazis wanted to make everybody perfect and control everything uh, Philip aims to prove he's better than his worst mistakes and Liam is searching for a way to control the portal to the shadow world he's, he's uncovered and the monsters that live within it before the Nazi regime can do the same. So I'm thinking that this is a bit of a save the world, save the world romp with maybe a little bit of, maybe a little bit of romance but not too much. Uh, focusing more on the found family aspects and the horror of war so we will be reading that tonight and I don't know if I showed you but this is the this is a book box club so it came with a book plate which I've signed book plate which I've just stuck in there uh, the bright and the pale in case I didn't mention it was fairy loot and that's the two books I'm dealing with so far. Speaking of book boxes, this is very fitting, but my fairy loot box and my Lumicrate box both were delivered today, so I'm going to unbox them. The only thing I've done is just, especially with the Lumicrate, I've opened, I sliced the top open um, just to check that it was the Lumicrate and then I and then I open, then I cut the tape, the some tape on the fairy loot one to make this part of the video easier because I'm not laughing with anything like that. So we'll start with the fairy loot just because it's on top. Oh, there's a very interesting um, ceramic item here. I can't remember the theme, so when I find the theme card, we will go through it together. So I'm going to put this down. I'm just going to dig in this little paper envelope, which is so cute. I might keep this and see if I can put it in a box. You know, none of my notebooks make it pretty. Ooh! So, this is a phone holder. Do they go this way? I don't think that's right. I think it's the other way. Uh, but it says, Behold What Has Arrived by Jordan Ifueco. I can never say that and I apologise if it's wrong. Uh, but I'm assuming that this is from Ray Bearer, which I do have on my shelves but haven't read yet. And I think it's that. I think it must be that way. And then you can pop your... So if we put it this way and then the phone can go on there like that. 
so that's quite cool I do like some I do like the phone holder things like that, that are useful I don't have a desk from working from home but as soon as I find something to find a desk or go back to the office that is coming in that it will be used there um, we'll do this little box here oh serpent and dove coaster set oh and the hexagon pentagon this shape so oh, we'll put you that side we have this guy i think he might be reed not sure who that is i think that is lou's friend whose name i've forgotten and obviously we have lou these are stunning, just black and white illustrations with gold accents, which hit the light beautifully. Um, when I find the spoiler card, I will tell you who what only these are by. So we have this box, which is very pretty. Oh, it's a game. Roll the dice reading list game. Oh, I've been wanting a die. So how do you... How do you play? So we have the die which I will be using for something because it is just stunning. Um, it's a 20 sided die. Gold and purple I want to say and it has got a little bit of weight to it. So this will be used for game of TBR whenever I get that sorted. And then the it just comes in a box like this with a little notepad with the num with the numbers one to twenty down the down there and a ticky box. So I'm assuming you roll the die, write the books down, and then tick them off when they're done. But the that paper will come in handy for even if I don't play the game. That paper will come in handy for book for um, bullet journaling because you know I like to stick things in. Okay, so we have a straw. So the interesting item must be a tumbler, but it is so well wrapped. We have the straw. From now until the darkness claims us. Now I use my, I have the Queen of Nothing tumbler that I really did and I absolutely adore it. It is the perfect size for iced coffees, which I am obsessed with at the moment. Uh, if you're in, if you're in the UK and anywhere near an Aldi, they're doing a lush, a absolutely lush iced coffee sachet. Just a bit of water, a bit of bit of cold water, a bit of ice, stir it together, pop it in your fairy loot mug, or t well, fairy loot tumbler, and there's dragons, why did I not see the dragons? We'll pop it in there and you're good to go. You need to find out what book that's from, because it's top dragons. Okay, so we have the book and I'm shedding wormies everywhere. And the last thing in the items we have are spo ha -ha, spoiler card. <gasps> I know what the book is. The book is Witches Steeped in Gold. Um, and the theme was spellcraft. So I'll quickly give you a look at that. So we'll go through the rest of the items and then we'll unbox the book. And I can tell you who made slash designed what and what they are inspired by. So we have a cool print, oh, but I couldn't tell you who these characters are, but I think, but, but there are, these guys are vampires, you can see little fans. <sighs> then we have our tarot cards, uh, we have ten of ones and nine of ones, and these guys are stunning, so I think, oh, why can I never remember the guys' names? But these are the secondary characters in Serpent and Dove. Oh, I can't remember the names and it's going to bug me. So we'll use our spoiler card. Right. So, the Tumblr is inspired by the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. Designed by Chatty Nora. 
the wooden phone stand which is just gorgeous is designed by lady uh, the lettering is designed by lady chub letters and is inspired by Rebecca by jordan Flickle. um foiled coasters uh, inspired by serpent and dove and featuring art by at ours 28 tbr game right so all you need to do is write down all of the books you want to choose from on the number sheet of paper and roll the dice whichever number you roll that's the book you read okay we can we can deal with that and then art print is by the characters from crave series by tracy wolf i know that is the new vampire book that everyone's talking about by grace c h u art and the tarot cards are designed by Morgana Zero Anagram. Anag Anagram, sorry, and are inspired by Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mohorin. So, let's get on to the book. Now, my prediction is Witch is Steeped in Gold, and you saw me say that before I looked at the back of the spoiler card, and I promise I haven't looked. I was using the I was using the tarot cards as a book as a place market to stop to stop from peeking. Okay, so it's pretty, ooh, it's pretty edges, and it and it has a ribbon bookmark. And the ribbon bookmark's just there. And the cover is green and ooh, pretty. So we'll put it that way. Right, so we have our author letter. And a bookmark, the a fairy scoop with the interview with the author and the redesigned cover. And honestly, this is stunning. And I definitely like this better than the original cover, which okay. So this is the not as an exclusive bookmark it's the art print bookmark <laughs> which we always get with fairy loot but you know it fits so perfectly and it's signed we have some really pretty end pages there let's have a look at what it is underneath and we'll read the oh she pretty so this is what the cover looks like naked i love this green and green and gold. I'm not really a gold person but this works. Then we have Lido's jacket art. So these must be our two characters and they are beautiful. Um, order divides them, revenge will unite them. Aria Adair has spent her life in a cell. Heir of an over overthrown and magically gifted a dynasty. She was exiled from the island nation of Achaea. But every day it brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Jasmine Carriot grew up dressed in gold with stolen magic at her fingertips. Daughter of the self-crowned Doyenne, her existence is a threat to her mother's rule, but Jasmine has no intention of dying. Sworn enemies, the two witches take and are a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds. But revenge is a bloody pursuit, and nothing is certain except, except the lengths Aria and Jasmine will go to win this game. And that, as I understand it, this is inspired by Jamaican or Island folklore. And she, oh, and the user, the author, Shannon, Shannon, is English. Uh, but she, but I believe she has Jamaican heritage, but I could be wrong, but how do I how do I display this book because this cover is beautiful the undercover is beautiful and the naked cover is beautiful and as you guys probably know once i've read a fairy loot book with or an illumicrate book with an ex with an under dust jacket i turn them out so it looks like this with the character art because it makes more sense that way when i know who everybody is and i'm just making a mess over here but yeah that was the fairy loot book fairy loot book fairy loot box for me and june's theme is animal companions oh the 
bird singing, angel song, for animals, yay! Okay, so, uh, in this box you can inspect expect items inspired by the Raven Boys. I haven't read it, don't really think it'd be my thing. Crescent City, have it, want to read. Priory of the Orange Tree, have it, want to read. Hoping to read next month when hopefully I get to go on holiday. Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, haven't seen haven't read it but have seen bits of the film and thought the cat was adorable and kingdom of the wicked have seen have read sorry loved it eagerly awaiting the sequel uh, we are thrilled to reveal that this box will include two items that we've never featured before one of which is a crescent city flower pot which i must have got my reveals mixed up because i swear when i saw that i thought it was the pot um Featured book of the month is contemporary fantasy filled with sarcastic characters, dragons, there's dragons in this book, action and a, dan and a dash of romance. Eh, we're not here, let's be honest, we're not here for the romance, we're here for the dragons. Uh, Fairy Loot exclusive edition will have an exclusive cover, sprayed edges, artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket by at I can draw things with a Z, foil embossing on the case by I can draw things with a Z, and will be signed by the author. So I'm. Uh, can I say my favourite item is the book? Just how pretty it is. Yeah, we'll say the book is my favourite item because of how pretty it is. But the stand is fairly useful, and you can you can never have too many mugs or tumblers or anything of that nature. So we'll put you over there for now, and we'll do Lumicrate. Oh, this could be a video all on its own, but I can't be bothered. We'll just stick it in the vlog. Uh, so the theme for this one was change your stars. I'm not going to look at the spoiler card. And the first item I see is this uh, tea caddy pot thing. Now I have the other, I have a couple of these. And this one, does it tell me? Um, all the elements, earth, fire, water, air, have their own creatures by S.A. Chakraborty. Tea tin, designed by Shirley Jackson, a.k.a. Lion in the Trees. So going by that quote, I think this might be City of Brass inspired. And I think this one is my favourite. It's just so elegant. Well, I mean, there's a river creature getting having a fight with the phoenix here, but you know. So you can live there with the... Are you going to fit? No, because the book's too big. Yeah, we'll put you there for now. So we'll undo, get rid of the paper. What's this? Okay, so that's the pin. So we'll leave that out because the Lumicrate do... The, the um, Lumicrate monthly pins are usually inspired by the... Um, by the book of the month, so we'll leave that out for now, just in case. In ideas are so much wilder than memories by V. Schwab. Oh, this is art paper. This is a nice blank notebook, sketch pad, watercolor. The paper is quite thick, and that's what it looks like. Now I'm thinking this might be Addie Larue. The Near Witch or Darker or darker Shade of Magic and it came in a little pouch which is so cute. So we'll just pop him back in there to keep him safe. Uh, we have another pin. So, yeah, so I think this one is the book, book pin and this one is an item so we'll just quickly check the spoiler card yeah so this is a, an item it's by novel novel threads or blissfully bookish uh, it is the it's the most exquisite dress i have ever seen even including the outfits the other girls on the first night of the palace this one outshines them all and it is a pretty dress sort of the gradient from white to blue and the quick little sneak peek I had at the spoiler card tells me that this is, I think this is Girls of Paper and Fire. But we'll, as always, once we get everything done, we come to the book, we'll check the spoiler card. 
So this one can go with the book. <laughs> oh, what are you? Are you a key? You look like a transformer. You see, I'm not sure what this is, but it's quite heavy. <laughs> it looks like a transformer. <laughs> right, and, that, and aside from the book sleeve that the book is in, that's the last of the items and obviously the pin. So we'll go through it. Okay, so the... The book sleeve is the first thing on the spoiler card, if we can get it out of the box. And it looks like this, it's the same on both sides. Whatever is in here is heavy. Uh, and this is inspired by the Steric Castle from Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I have read Spinning Silver. I really want to read Uprooted and I have read A Deadly Education and I think Naomi's writing is a little bit hit or miss for me because it is very slow and I need to be in the right mind space for it. Um, so we have that. The artwork was designed by Paul Hammy, P-A-U-H-A-M-I. I, I apologise if I said that wrong. Um, Girls of Paper and Fire dress enamel pin. It was right, so Girls of Paper and Fire, which I haven't read and do think I should. It's getting rave reviews. Uh, Wilder Than Memory sketchbook was designed by Renata Krosik. I'm so sorry if I say that wrong. Uh, but her handle on Instagram is at runner.illustration. And I was right with that being The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue. Element Elemental... Creatures Teetin was Deva Bed Trilogy, so City of Brass. Um, this is a new collection that Illumicrate are doing, Illumicay. It's quite heavy. Uh, designed by Danielle at Dalandan at IL. So Dan, Dal and Dan dot IL. Um, and this is inspired by Embot, which makes, which... Oh yeah, because I can see it. I thought it looked like a face, but if you look, the blue is Embot, as he's described in the Skyward books by Brandon Sanderson. And I have read that one. The books are currently with Sean, waiting for him to read them. I better have a look at the... Do I do pin first, or do I do book first? We'll do pin first, because that may give me a hint of the book. Oh, now that is pretty. Looks like it's a Mayan slash Aztec temple. And as ever, these are designed by Stacey McAvoy Cornt. I always feel like I'm swearing when I say that, and I think it's just the accent. Um, but yep, that is stunning. If you look, you can see the book. And let's have a look at this without further ado. It's chunky. The Jasmine Thrown by Tasha Suri. I don't think I've heard of this one. That's why I like Illuminate Fairy. Just to give me books that I've never heard of before. Mostly. <laughs> Ooh, it's got some sprayed edges going on here. It's a little a flower print. Uh, so this is the cover. Oh, we have things inside. Right. So we have a letter from the author with character art and book plate. I'll stick that in in a minute. And right. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I love this colour. As it says, a vengeful princess, a hidden priestess with, I think, a flower. And I'm thinking the flower, is going to, the flower motif is going to be prevalent in the book. And the top, and at the top, it says, together they will change the fate of an empire. And it's this burgundy, sort of dark brown, I would say. I think it looks more red on the camera, but it's that sort of in-between. I knew I knew her name. So she's wrote Empire of Sand and Realm of Ash, um, which is brilliant. Okay, so... One is... 
I'm not putting the dress jacket on yet. Uh, one is a vengeful princess seeking to dispose her brother from his throne. The other is a priestess see uh, searching for her family. Together they will change the fate of an empire. Imprisoned by her dictator, Brother Malini spends her days in isolation with her the Harana, an ancient temple that was once the source of powerful magic, but is now little more than a decaying ruin, which must be what our pin is designed off. And Priya is a maidservant, one of several who make the treacherous journey to the top of the Harana every night to attend Malini's chamber. She is happy to be an anonymous drudge as long as it keeps every anyone from guessing the dangerous secret she hides. But when Malini accidentally bears witness to Priya's true nature, their destinies become irrevocably irrever irrever tangled. Why is that so hard to say? Um, so this is going by the dust jacket here. Um, it's going to be very South Asian influenced, which I do love. I do like a bit of... Um, is it wrong to say I like the idea of Bollywood? The all of the pretty colours and the fabrics and the dancing and the food. Okay, I'm very food orientated. Um, but this update has gone on for 26 minutes at this point and I don't think I have anything else to tell you other than I think it's time I get reading but I do have washing to put away. And somewhere and I have my TBR trolley that I need to update. However, if I am lucky and have another really good month like me, these books might get bumped straight from the hall shelf to the TBR shelf. Well, they'll go from hall to they'll go from hall to wrap up. But you know what I mean. So I'm going to pop these away, find somewhere to put everything. And then read because I have nothing else to do, and I am no idea how this video, how long this vlog's going to be. Now, where's my remote? So I'll make the next two. I'll make the next couple of updates short. I promise. So it's a Thursday. I have no idea how long this vlog is already. Um, but update on the Shadow War by Lindsay Smith. I'm a hundred pages in, and I'm not not enjoying it so bookmark is out we'll put the dust jacket back on and we'll pop it into the unhole box now, it's not that it's a bad book i think it's a very well written book just i'm not enjoying it um, historical fiction and i have a bit of a love hate relationship there's only like a couple that i actually like and even then, Philippa Gregory, there's only a what? So far, there's only three books that I actually in I actually enjoyed from her. Um, and again, with Kate Moss, I've read everything. Everything I've read of her so far, I have enjoyed. And I think it's just the nature of the timelines in those ones. They're a little bit further back. And there is an almost medieval, the medieval setting um, is what intrigues me more than sort of like a recent history. I think it's because most fantasy worlds have a medieval-esque setting about them. They have, and I'm talking high fantasy, epic fantasy, not um, more than urban fantasy. Um, so it just goes to show you that with subscription boxes, you do get the opportunity to try books that you wouldn't necessarily try otherwise and I just know that World War II fiction isn't really for me at least in that sense I mean on paper on paper it had Hellboy elements and I do love and I do love Hellboy the original with Ron Perlman uh, but just not for me and because I'm and because I'm not reading this for a review it wasn't sent to me um, I pay for the subscription boxes myself. I'm not going to push myself with a book that I'm not enjoying, especially when I know that it's not a genre that I would take or a setting that I tend to enjoy anyway. It's not fair to me, it's not fair to the book, and it's not fair to you guys because, you know, 
this might be a book that you enjoy and if I'm and if I don't enjoy it or read it read it badly because I don't enjoy that kind of thing anyway it might put you off what could what could be a five star for you so we'll just put that in the box and I think I'll go for what is calling my name out of that box I think I'll read Master of One which is this chunker uh, this is by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett as far as I can tell it is about a ragtag group of individuals led by our two-bit thief rags and he is so he's um, captured by Murray and the last who is a bit of a royal sorcerer who tries to get who forces rags to steal six pieces of an immeasurably powerful ancient fae relic uh, until he um, and rags is still determined that he's going to do this until he discovers that the relics that Murray and are after are actually people so we have our ragtag group distractingly handsome fae prince who's been asleep for centuries queen's guard deserter with more honor than common sense Daughter of a disgraced noble family who hits first and asks questions later. Deceptively sweet natured prince, a member of the underground resistance, and Morian, um, sorry, and Rags himself. Uh, so, yeah, looks interesting. It seems to be a bit more even footing for me. It is, um, epic fantasy. Is it epic or high? Either, either way. And look, it has a lizard thing. I thought it was a dragon the first time I saw it, but now I just think it's a giant gecko. And if you don't know this about me, I used to have a pet bearded dragon, and so this is my kind of pet. So I'll miss, so I'll come back to you when I have more to say on this book. It is. Why is it all the books I'm liking at the moment are red? But yeah, I'll come get back to you when I have something to say about this one. And if you've made it this far, thank you. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Friday. We finally made it to the end of the week. It feels like it's been a month already. Um, but I'm just popping in to give you a final update of the week on Master of One and to close out the vlog because as you know I don't tend to vlog at the weekends that's my time and yeah <laughs> so I mean not that not that I don't enjoy vlogging and and reading but you know sometimes it's nice just to have some time away from the camera and recharge for the beginning of the week uh, but uh, with this book it is quite chunky and I am on page 70 which in this book is chapter 12 um, did I tell you what this was about yesterday? I think I did. Um, but at the moment we are following Rags, the thief. He's the only um, perspective we're following at the moment. But it is a lot more enjoyable than The Shadow War. And <sighs> The Shadow War isn't a bad book. It's just a bad book for me because I don't like reading about the war. <laughs> um, but my sister, who is currently reading it, is actually enjoying it. So I feel justified in um, giving that one to her to enjoy. Um, but back to this one. Um, I'm really enjoying the writing. Rags as a character is really interesting. He's quite witty. He has a bit of a dark sense of humour that I enjoy. Um, it's not giving me five star feels, but it is very high four star at the moment I don't know where the plot is going even if the general premise is you know quite quite standard for a thief type story thief gets hired by by the bad guy has to find these things these things turn out to be not what was expected and it goes from there so the so the things that are not what expect are expected are the other characters who, who we haven't met yet um, at the is this a spoiler? Um, no, because it mentions it quite early on in the book, but Rags is the seventh or eighth person to try and pass this fair maze. 
and it's killed everybody else so he's doing well so far um where i'm at at the moment he's still going through the trials but that's tonight's plans i'm going to read more of this i don't see myself finishing it tonight so i'll probably just take it to sean's over the weekend and the football and the euros are starting so that means it's a i'm not a football fan so he can watch the football i'll probably read or go in the bath um so that's all i've got to say for the moment um i'll probably end the vlog here let's say for the rest of the night i'm just gonna be reading i do want to have a bit of a tidy up of my room and then um i'll just chill with booktube see what youtube throws at me and possibly pretty little liars because i'm getting into that again as well uh, so that's all for this video if you liked it give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this talk about these and i'll see you in the next one bye